screw it up a little bit here. So the first time we're going to come in, you know, a little bit too fast. Now that we're getting close to the ground, we're going to curve through ETL, we've got a crosswind, we're going to get it into the wind a little bit, and now we've come down to the ground. So also remember with steep approaches, we really have to transition our sight picture from letting the pad go underneath us. Normal approach, you know, you'll keep the pad inside most of the time, you just won't focus on it, but a steep approach you will lose sight of that pad because at a certain point it will go underneath you. Good afternoon everyone, it's Alex with Anthelio Helicopters here for uh, another video in our training series today. Hope everyone's doing well and it's flying safe out there. Uh, today we are going to continue on with steep approaches. Uh, I'm sure you've all been practicing and playing with steep approaches throughout your uh, your training career so far. So, you know, we're going to go over the, the, the what's, the where's and the why's of those today. So steep approaches are mainly used for obstacle clearance and in some cases turbulence uh, avoidance as well. Uh, usually, you know, when we're doing confined area approaches, and like all you guys know, we're flying the tail of the aircraft, uh, steep approaches give us the best chance of avoiding wires, trees, and the other obstacles from getting into a confined area. Uh, we tend to use them as well uh, for when we're landing on tops of buildings to avoid mechanical turbulence that you will hit if you come in with a shallow or a normal approach. So that is what we're going into actually to look into today, and uh, the big aspect that you'll all be obviously trying to avoid, and I'm sure you guys already know, uh, there's the issue with a steep approach, is getting into vortex ring state and consequently settling with power, uh, which is a big no-no, so we'll always be aware of our wind, uh, making sure that we do not get settled too much, not have too high a vertical uh, descent rate, and not too slow a airspeed at the same time, we do not want to go below ETL, effective translational lift. All right, it's a bit of a mouthful, so let's get this going. All right, guys, back with you again. Now we're going to set up for the steep approaches. So, you know, the steep approach, um, I'll bring it in just like a, a regular approach. The difference is your sight picture is going to be different. Like we said, we're using it for obstacle uh, avoidance. Uh, potential turbulence avoidance as well. So, you know, we're still going to do our regular checks. We're crossing 3 zero here at 500. Warning lights out, gauge the green, pressure temperature is good, clear left and right. Same principles apply. Flying by attitude, looking out for traffic, all the same good stuff. So, coming down the collective, little left cycle, little uh, right pedal. Keeping us nice and straight. Uh, clear it left and right. Uh, we're going to do this time. The first time we're going to kind of, a couple of times we're going to screw it up a little bit here. So the first time we're going to come in, you know, a little bit too fast and see, tell you what not to do. And finally we'll do it correctly. So here we are coming around our final, you know, around 60, 70 knots now. We're coming pretty good. Uh, and a common mistake that people do is they come way too fast into their approach. And by the time they realize they're coming too fast, it's a bit too late. So right now, here I am, I'm just thinking I'm okay, that I'm not, I'm like, oh goodness, goodness me, I'm going too fast, and so I'm trying to slow up, I'm going to balloon up at the same time. I'm ballooning up, and now I'm like, oh no, I'm going to get this, so now here I am coming with my power, I can already feel ETL, but I'm going along, now what we want to do is not force it. I'm slowing up as much as I can, but if you start to feel ETL and you're not seeing you're seeing the pad start to go under you, you're just going to have to level that ship and go long and take it as a learning experience. Do not force the issue and go in below ETO because then you will get into settling with power. That's the one of those common things that people are going to do. Yeah, oh, we're just going to go long. We're not amazingly long, but we are long. And I'm anticipating, now oh, that we're getting close to the ground, we're going to go through ETO, we've got a crosswind, we're going to get it into the wind a little bit. And now we've come down to the ground. So also remember with steep approaches, we really have to transition our sight picture from letting the pad go underneath us. Normal approach, you know, you'll keep the pad in sight most of the time, you just won't focus on it, but a steep approach you will lose sight of that pad because at a certain point it will go underneath you. So that time, that was just a classic case, coming in too fast, not setting up properly, not prepping properly. And by the time we figured it out and tried to slow down, we'd ballooned up, gained even more altitude, tried to slow down even more, we got into ETL, there's no way it was going to work, we couldn't force it, so we just had to give up as it were and go along. 
again, if that was in the real world and you uh, didn't have the space, you were just going to have to do your go around at that point, pull in power, get some airspeed and get out of there. Uh, but obviously here we have your space. But, but the same principle is, you know, if, you, if you're going to go, if you can't make it, don't force it. Either go long or get out of there, take your exit and go around and try again. There is always, always, always another try uh, with it as long as you've got the fuel to do it. Don't force the issue. All right, so let's go and do it again, and let's actually try and get it actually reasonably well this time. Okay. Uh, we're doing a crosswind takeoff there. Just for you guys, uh, we are pretty much a south wind right now at Long Beach, so we're going to sort of split the difference with my nose just to get it through ETL and then put my nose straight. We'll cover crosswind landings and takeoffs in a, a later video. Now, the other, other alternative is that we come in too shallow, which is going to be like a shallow approach, and uh, then it's just, obviously it's not a steep approach at all, and in the real world, uh, we would not be avoiding the obstacles that we were trying to clear, or avoiding the turbulence that we were trying to clear, so it would be a complete waste of time. So, here we are coming up, and let's try and get the side picture. So, the steep approach side picture for me, again, it will be different from aircraft to aircraft, so, you know, really just... Um, you know, judge it based on your aircraft and your instrument console that you've got and your visibility, but you sub should be somewhere between the console and the bottom of the window for a steep approach. I mean, it, it will vary. Before I share the clip, I'm battery, thanks. It will vary from helicopter to helicopter, um, but generally, you know, the whole idea is that you're at a profile where you can have successful obstacle clearance, and that will be somewhere probably between the the console and uh, the bottom of the bubble. And if you've got chin bubble, all the merrier, then you're a lucky person, because you can definitely see it. Sometimes on this I have to move myself sideways to get the console out of the way. But, you know, obviously when we I used to do EMS or HAA, then, uh, then you did really steep approaches, pretty much vertical approaches, but we're not going to do those today. That's not what we're teaching right now. We might look at that in future videos. So here we are on approach again. Steep approach, all about setup. Like most things, right? If I set up early, I know where I'm going. I'm already looking when I'm turning my base leg here, clearing left and right, where I'm going, what I'm doing. I can already start slowing myself up on that final so I'm not steaming in way too fast. And usually what I like to do is deal with airspeed and descent in two separate stages just so I'm not overwhelmed uh, when I'm teaching someone or I'm overwhelmed myself. And it just finds it easier than trying to combine the two because you always get taught, don't go below three. 300 feet a minute descent rate below 30 knots and it gets kind of confusing sometimes which to do first and how to do it. But generally I'll be keep my uh, normal approach profile and I'll just start slowing up. So it's 300 feet here. Here's my normal approach profile now. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to keep slowing up ever so slightly here. You know, it's getting steeper. Not climbing, not descending. Just slowing up until I feel the start of ETL. When I start to feel ETL, that's when I'm not going to go any lower. Okay, and then once I've got to that correct profile and I feel ETL, that is level of ship. I know I can't go any slower, and I'm using the collective to manage my rate of descent. And I'm, I'm now absolutely level, and I'm just coming down around 200 feet a minute. Now, once I've got a level attitude, it kind of does itself. I'm using my peripheral vision a lot right now, and as I get closer to the pad, I'm not the pad will pass underneath me, and I'm just using that peripheral vision to, obviously, in the real world, I'll be looking at where my obstacles were and making sure I was landing as long as possible to clear them. But here I'm just trying to hit the number three on the, the button as we come on down, anticipating coming through ETL, coming on a more of a crosswind approach because I've got a pretty strong crosswind. There's the ETL, there's the tail rotor going through, but it's fine, we were ahead of it, and here we are coming right down onto the pad. Far more successful steep approach than last time. So the moral of the story with this one, again this video is nice and short and sweet, is set up, set up, set up you know, anticipate what you're going to do and slow yourself up nice and early as you're coming around an approach. Be prepared to do a go around here or a land long if it doesn't look good. Deal with your airspeed and your altitude separately uh, because it's less, you know, less to think about and you can control things more and fly the attitude of the aircraft all the way to the ground. Anticipate ETL, think about the wind and what effect that's going to have on you. All right, so next video we're going to look at shallow approach and running landings and we'll see you guys then and in the meantime fly safe bye